All right, welcome to our very first video math extravaganza, and I will find a better name for it than that one of these days. Today we will be finding a midpoint of a line segment. Remember, the midpoint is the point on a line segment which lies right in the middle between the two endpoints. So if I had to eyeball it, I would say, oh, that's the midpoint of our segment AB. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to just eyeball it. We want to actually know the coordinates. So my first step is I need to figure out where my endpoints are. Oh, they're there, sure. I need to find the coordinates of them. I need to give the exact address of each of my endpoints. So fortunately, I have my points on a coordinate plane. And so to find the coordinates, first I need to find out how far along the x-axis I need to move. And then I need to find out how, long, how far along the y-axis I would need to move in order to get to my point. And we always do the x first and then the y. And keep in mind that the going right is defined as being the positive direction, being left is the negative direction, going up is positive for y, and going down is negative for y. So that means that if I want to find the x-coordinate, so remember we, ha we always have coordinates that look like x, y, so if I want to find the x-coordinate for point A, I see how far over I need to go from the origin, my point in the middle, and now I need to find out in which direction I'm going. So it looks like I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points left. So that's going to be negative 7 as my x-coordinate. Then my y-coordinate, well to find my y-coordinate, what I need to do is figure out how far up or down I have to go. And I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 it looks like. So the coordinates of A are negative 7, 5. I then need to find the coordinates of B. So I repeat the procedure and I count over and I find that I am 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over. And I am 1, 2 down. So 2 down means the y coordinate would be negative 2. And then of course I go ahead and put my coordinates in parentheses and I throw in a comma to differentiate between the two. So I know that this is my x and this is my y coordinate. Alright, now that I have that, I'm actually almost done. All I have to do is use the midpoint formula. And if we understand what the midpoint formula is saying, then this actually won't be too bad for us. This notation here, I say x with a little mid under it. We call that x sub mid. What I'm saying there is I want the x coordinate of the midpoint, and this will represent the y coordinate of the midpoint. Remember, the midpoint is a point just like A and B are points. It has to have two coordinates. So we have to find two different numbers. An x-coordinate, so how far along here, and a y-coordinate, how far along here. I have, to, I have to go find my midpoint. And you can think of this as being two different equations, if you'd like. If you want, you could always just say x-mid equals something, and y-mid equals something. And in this case, we'd have xA plus xB over 2, yA plus yB over 2. So long as you remember that these two values that you're creating are coordinates. So, what I should do next, I find a very helpful step when solving a problem like this, is to just make a table where I list all of the different values that I have. So I'm going to make a table. It can just be a chart where I keep track of XA, XB, YA, and YB. Alright, so XA is going to be negative 7. Remember, that's what we found. That's the x-coordinate of point A. So I just go ahead and put negative 7 in there. Now I want to find xB. So I go ahead and I go to... Point 
B, and I look for its X coordinate, which is 6. Remember, X coordinate is going to be the first coordinate, not the second coordinate. And I know I'm looking for point B, because that's what I have there. So, that was good. I'm sorry, the 6. X, B equals 6. So, try it out. What should Y, A be? Did you get it? Did you get that Y, A is 5? And then Y, B, the Y coordinate of point B, is going to be negative 2. Great. Now I have everything I need. All my information is right here. I don't have to go scrolling up and down between the charts, I'm sorry, the graph and my table of information here. I can just use the information in this table and the information in my equation to find the midpoint. So, find the x coordinate of the midpoint by plugging in my values here. Let's use blue. So, x a is negative 7, so we're going to say x mid equals, I just moved this down here, x mid equals, and now I know what x a and x b are, so I would, that would be negative 7 plus 6 over 2, which equals negative 1 half. And I know that y of the midpoint, so a plus yb over 2. So what should I do? Did you say I should take these two numbers, add them together? ya is 5, yb is negative 2, so if I add negative 2, I can also rewrite that as saying that is 5 minus 2. which equals 3 over 2, 3 halves. Great, so now I know the x-coordinate of my midpoint and the y-coordinate of my midpoint. So I know that my midpoint, or we can be very technical and call it the midpoint of AB, has coordinates, and remember we're going to put our x coordinate first and our y coordinate second, so it has coordinates negative one half, comma, three halves. Remember these are two different numbers, so don't go adding them together. A coordinate, you have two different coordinates you need for your midpoint. And now that I have them, all I need to do is go and find out where this is. So negative one half, three halves. So negative one half, means I want to go half a step to the left. All right, and three halves means I want to go one and a half steps up, which looks like it's going to put me right about there. There's my midpoint. Let's call it M, and it has coordinates negative one half, three halves. And there we go. That's the end. We found a midpoint of our segment. We did that by looking at the coordinates of our two points making a table of all the important information, like those coordinates that we've talked about. And then we just simply plugged our values in to the midpoint formula. And you can either use this one big step here, or you could use these two little smaller steps right here. And then remember that each of those is only half of your answer. Each of those is one coordinate, whereas you need both coordinates in order to have the location for a point. Alright, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, including hot practice problems. We'll catch you later.